ask for you to give your father a praise. Don't you owe it to him? Has he been good to you at all? Has he kept you? Has he protected you? Has he kept your secrets? Has he loved you? Has he paid your bills? Has he healed your body? Has he shielded you from the enemy? Has he shielded you from gossip? Has he shielded you from plots and plans that has no power over you? When I say give your God a praise, and let me get out of your way and you give the God you owe 10 seconds of. Come on, come on. Come on, let God hear you. Come on, don't play with it. Let God hear you. To God be the glory for the things he has done. I, I, I want to be wise with my time, uh, but I would be remiss uh, if we didn't take a moment uh, and honor two people that sacrifice so that we could stand in this building. Two people that go through whatever they go through just so that we could come in here and worship together. And so with that being said, could we give a heartfelt honor to Pastor John and Aventer Gray. Come on, we don't know what they sacrifice. We don't know what they go without. We don't know how many hits they take. Um, if we can, uh, turn your Bibles with me to Luke, Luke chapter 1. Um, and when you have it, say I'm with you. I'm going to read uh, verse 34 through 42. Um, I'm going to read a couple of verses for the sake of brevity, so it won't take me long. Then said Mary unto the angel, how shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. The power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also the Holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the son of God and behold the cousin Elizabeth she has also conceived a son in her old age and this the sixth month with her who was called barren for with God some things <laughs> a couple of things for with God nothing shall be impossible and Mary said behold thy handmaiden of the Lord be it unto me according to thy word and the angel departed from her and Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste to a city of Judea and entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth and it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And she spake out loud with the voice and said, Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. That's all I need. Uh, now my title might not make sense at first, but if you give me a second, I declare you'll hear from God. Um, I want to talk to you from the subject it's coming back it's it's coming back for those of you who are doubting it it's coming back dad we need you <laughs> we need you in ways we can't describe but father we ask that you manifest in this room shift and feel the atmosphere walk up and down aisles and touch your sons and daughters as you see fit what we want you to understand is we want you to have your way. Speak in a way where we could walk as manifestors. We don't want to live and die as dreamers, but we want to touch what it is you promised us. And for that, we say thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. You may be seated in the presence of God. Uh, 
Let me start by pointing out for some believers what I believe the struggle is as you move into a new year. Um, for some believers, the struggle when you move into the new year uh, is what I like to call the voice after a New Year's Eve service. Uh, it's when we have a New Year's Eve service and the Spirit of God is moving. When we have a New Year's Eve service and we're declaring and decreeing. So when we have a New Year's Eve service and you hear different things that God plans on doing in your life. It's when you have a New Year's Eve service and you're excited about it because you heard and God gave you clarity in areas where you was confused. It's when you have a New Year's Eve service and you leave excited because now you got your marching orders. But immediately after you get your marching orders, here comes a voice. And the voice typically says, this year is going to be just like the last. And it might not be everybody, but is there anybody in this room that heard the enemy say, this is going to be like last year? And this is a tough place to be because you heard God say he was going to make you debt free this year. And the voice comes and say, you're going to be broke just like you was in 22. It's when you heard God say he is going to heal your body this year. And then you hear the enemy say, you're still going to be sick this year. Get your money put to the side because you're going to have a lot of hospital bills that you're going to have to cover and pay. And you're stuck because you have a good service and a word from the enemy and it's problematic because it could almost make you afraid to hope we don't want to talk about it but 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 every now and again when it comes to the things of God some of us are scared to hope for it it's not that we don't believe God has the power to do it but the fear of getting our hopes up to get disappointed again is something we just don't want to do have you ever held back on your hope out of fear of getting disappointed? Disappointed because the last time you put your hope in it, it didn't come to pass. The last time you told your prayer partner, God said he's going to move and it didn't come to pass. The last time you wrote on social media, look out, here come the blessing of God. Nothing happens. And now you are afraid to hope, believing in God, but I'm scared to hope for better. And it's a unique place to be when the enemy speaks to you and you are afraid to hope because we want better. But every now and again, we do not know what to say back to the enemy. And this is why I am here today, because I am here to address what the enemy has spoke to you. Because whether you believe it or not, every now and again, you got to speak back to the enemy. Now look at your neighbor and say talk back to him yeah 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 Jesus taught us after he came from out of the Jordan when he said it is written man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God that every now and again in the face of opposition in the face of your fear in the face of failure every now and again you got to speak back to the enemy I know they told you to ignore him but sometimes you got to speak back I know they told you to act like he didn't say nothing but every now and again you got to stand flat footed and look the enemy dead in his eyes and tell him what God said over your life look at your neighbor again and say speak back Yes, see, we'll speak back to people but some of us are scared to talk to the enemy you'll speak back to your uh See, you'll get in arguments with silly people on the internet, but when the enemy speak, you have nothing to say. But I came to tell you, whenever you get ready to walk in what God promised you, walk in what God spoke over you, every now and again, you got to look at the enemy and speak back. <laughs> Prophetically, I came to tell you that this year is going to be different for you. Y'all didn't catch it. I'm going to come over here. I come to tell you that this year is going to be different for you. I don't know if y'all caught it. Let me try in the middle. Y'all my family. There you go. I came to tell somebody that this year is going to be different for you. Say different for me. Yeah, yeah, it means I'm not hating on you, but it's going to be different for me. It means that it didn't work out last year, but it's going to be different for me this year. It means that things didn't play out the way I wanted them in 22, but they are going to be different for me. 
different for me this year. And let me tell you why. First thing first, let me tell you the reason why it's going to be different is not because of the date. Because at the end of the day, January 1 has no power. All right, let me come back to you. January 2 has no power and 3 through 30 has no power. That's not why you're going to walk in what God promised you. You're not going to walk in what God promised you because of a date, but you're going to walk in what God promised you because of your being a farmer. You'll catch me in a second. Genesis 8 says, as long as the earth remains, it will always be seed time and somebody's going to catch it and I came to remind some of you that the reason 23 is going to be different because you sowed some seeds in 22 you put some stuff in the ground in 22 now look at your neighbor and say I put something in the ground hey, hey, I put some love in the ground I put some money in the ground I put my platform in the ground I put some support in the ground I put having your back in the ground I put praying for you in the ground I put inner seeding in the ground I put, uh, and the reason this year is going to be different because if it's only seed time and harvest and I've sown if Genesis 8 is true and at the end of the day the word of God is infallible and all you got is a seed sown I came to tell you to get ready for your harvest. Now speak over yourself and say, my harvest is coming. <laughs> you doubt it, don't you? But my harvest is coming. You don't believe it, do you? But my harvest is coming. You talk about me, don't you? But my harvest is coming. You whisper it about me, but my harvest is coming. That whether you believe it or not, whether you see it or not, whether you agree or not, whether you support or not, my harvest is My harvest is coming because the word told me to be not deceived. God is not mocked for whatsoever a man soweth. That shall he also reap. And I came to tell you that in 23, it's getting ready to start growing for you. And 23, it's getting ready to sprout for you. And 23, you're going to start seeing stuff come to the ground. Not because you're perfect. Not because you never messed up. Not because you... Uh, but because you've already sown. And when you give good measure pressed down shaken together shall men give unto your bosom and I came to tell you this year is going to be different because the seed you sown got to come back look at your neighbor and tell them it's coming back <laughs> it's, it's coming back it won't be a dormant seed it's coming back it won't stay underground. It's coming back. It won't sit there forever. It's coming back. After all I've suffered, it's coming back. After the sleepless nights, it's coming back. After all the tears I've cried, it's coming back. After all of the attack I took, it's coming back. After all the days I was confused and still didn't quit, it's coming back. After all the times I stood in the midst of controversy, it's coming back. After all the times I didn't quit, it, it is coming back. It's coming back. It's coming back. And some of you didn't receive this yet, so let me give you the word of God. Mary uh, was different. Mary was unique uh, because her life was all planned out. Her life was all put together. She was from the tribe of Judah. Yes. <laughs> and she was a spouse to a husband that was from the tribe of Judah. Yes. And there you see a Judah girl being connected with the Judah boy. And she was happy and excited because they was going to come together and have little Judah babies. 
everything put together cute, everything pretty, everything postured the correct way, everything good to be a posted picture because I'm with Judah and you with Judah, so it's gonna make for good TV. It's gonna make for a good photo shoot. It's gonna make for something good to be seen. And in the midst of her beautiful planning, God came and messed it all up. Has God ever came and messed up something that it took you two years to plan out? That you finally crossed all your T's and dotted all your I's and here come God just messing everything up, high and mighty and messing it all up, holy and messing it all up. El Shaddai, but you got an eraser and scratched all my plans. Has God ever messed your plans up? And there you are believing in God as you watched him scratch out everything you put on your board. Bowing in his presence as you watch him rub off the board everything that you put. Blessing his holy name as he get an eraser and scrub all of the things that you wrote for yourself. Let me tell you why God messed it up. It's because his plan for you is better for you than you wrote for yourself. See, Mary wrote Joseph for her, being espoused, but God wrote God for her. You'll catch me in a second. And when it comes to being a real baby daddy, if it's going to be Joseph or God, who is the better father? All right, y'all didn't catch it. You're going to catch it over here. If you had to compare on Maury who the father is, you got El Shaddai and Joseph. You got the Ancient of Days and Joseph. You got the Lily of the Valley and Joseph. You got my buckler and Joseph. You got my wheel in the middle of the wheel and Joseph. You got my bright and morning star and Joseph. And I came to tell some of you that what God wrote for you is better than what you wrote for yourself. Now speak out loud and say he wrote better. Yeah, I wrote this for me, but God wrote better. I wrote this money for me, but God wrote better. I wrote this relationship, but God wrote better. I wrote this health, but, but God wrote better. I wrote this business, but God wrote better. God wrote better for you than you wrote for yourself. You wrote better. And there she is, a girl with a rewritten script because God scratched out Joseph and wrote his name. <laughs> and I'm almost finished. I'm almost finished with my little Sunday school lesson. So he, he wrote his name and told her, yeah, you're going to have a son, but I'm the daddy. Uh, I'm, I'm the daddy. Well, how you going to be the daddy? And, 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 and I have been touched a man. See, see, and this is our problem. Because soon as we hear a word from God, we start trying to figure out how. Soon as you hear a prophetic word about what God going to do in your life, the first thing you do is try to figure out how is it going to happen? Through who is it going to happen? Who going to give me this money? I'm going to be debt free. Who going to pay my bills? I'm going to be healed. What medicine I'm going to take? I'm going to be traveling. Who going to pay for the plane ticket? And that's your problem. When God speaks, you just have to go with what he said. Say I'm going to go with it. Say it again, I'm going with it. It means I don't understand it, but I'm going with it. I can't make sense out of it, but I'm going with it. I don't know who to talk to about it, but I am going with it. Going with it. And so eventually she says, I'm going with it. Be it unto thy handmaiden exactly what it is you spoke because I'm going to stop trying to figure you out because I've learned a long time ago that God thinks bigger than I do. In fact, he said, man looks on the outer, but God looks on the heart. He kept talking eventually and then he says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. 
My ways are not your ways. From as high as the heavens is to the ground, so are my thoughts to your thoughts and my ways to... And the real problem with some of us is we're trying to figure out heavenly thoughts while we're on the ground. She accepts it and also got prophecy about her cousin. So she put her stuff together. She pack a bag, get a donkey, and she makes her way up the hill to see her cousin. Pregnant, donkey, up a hill. Uncomfortable. But I'm going to celebrate somebody else. It don't feel good but I'm going to celebrate somebody else. This isn't first class, but I'm going to celebrate somebody. See, see, when you're confident in what God is going to do in your own life, you have no problem celebrating somebody else. See, that's why everybody don't celebrate you is because they're not confident in what's happening with them. And so stop looking for them to applaud you, looking for them to celebrate you, looking for them to say yay and amen to what God spoke because the reason they are silent is because they don't believe that anything is going to happen to them. Sometimes their silence is a byproduct of their doubt. But she makes her way up the hill to go see her cousin. And I'm almost finished. And the Bible says she get off and open the door. She walks in the house. And the Bible says, and she made salutation to Elizabeth. And her baby leaped. And she caught the Holy Ghost. See, this is profound. It didn't say she walked in and greeted her cousin. Because in some translations, you would think that salutation means greeting. But in this text, salutation means to salute. God. And whenever you are saluted, it is indicative that you have rank. It's indicative that you have an office. And so here you see Mary addressing her according to her office. God give us people that will address us according to our office because I'm not just who you think I am. I have an office God gave me. I'm not just your homeboy. I walk in an office. I'm not just a person you kiki with. God has anointed me and ordained me and I have an office. And when she walked in, she saluted her office. That's why you're so irritated because you surround yourself with people that don't salute you. That's why you're always open for a handshake or somebody to speak into you or hug you or love you because you're desperate for affirmation because all week you've been talking to folks that don't salute you, texting with folks that don't salute you, emailing people that don't know who you are. But I came to speak about something different over you that this year is going to be different because you're going to be surrounded with people that see you according to what God see you and will address you according to the power that God has spoke over you. You're not to be taken common. You're not just any old body. God's kept you. He's anointed you. He's laid on you. You have an office. Now touch yourself and say, I got an office. Yeah, I got an office. God gave it to me. I got an office. Don't take me cool and common. I got an office. I'm not who I was. I got an office. I'm not who you think I am. I got an office. And God put me in a corner office because he called me and purposed me. And Lord, oh God. God gave me an office. And when she was saluted according to who God said she was, the breakthrough came. And something in her that she thought would be a stillborn leaped and she caught the Holy Spirit. And after this scene, Mary packs up her stuff and go back home. And when we see this, we think it's the end of scene. <laughs> When we see this, it looks like Mary is shorthanded. 
because there she is giving and walking away with nothing. Have you ever gave and left empty handed? I'm talking that when, when, when you gave your love and support and left with nobody to love and support you. When you gave having somebody else's back and left with nobody having yours. When you went to their grand opening and bought one of their ugly cupcakes that don't even taste good and walk away and won't nobody pay for nothing that you... See, 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 we don't want to be honest because a lot of us are living a life with this thought and question in our head. What about me? Because I love everybody, but what about me? I support everybody, but what about me? I give to everybody, but what about me? I speak life to everybody, but what about me? I have everybody else's back, but what about me? And I'm tired of being to everybody. What nobody wants to be back to me. Sick of being the strong friend. Tired of being the strong brother who runs to the rescue. But when I go through hell, when hell hounds scratching at my window three o'clock in the morning, when the enemy is telling me you might as well give up because it won't get no better. Who is there to be the me I was to them? I don't know about you, but there's been times in my life where I was looking for Q. Somebody will catch it. I was looking for me, the me that I am to them. I was looking for the me back and there I am desperate to get me back because I gave and after I gave you got your miracle your baby leaped you got the Holy Ghost but I gotta go back home embarrassed cause your baby is by Zacharias but my baby is by don't even worry about it you can take pictures in your story I gotta keep mine secret Joseph is trying to figure out how to get rid of me. My blessing is embarrassment. Do you know sometimes God will bless you through an embarrassment? See, y'all got to excuse me. God, God will bless you through something that you want to keep quiet. God will bless you through something that you don't want to talk to nobody about. God will bless you through something that you don't want to chat about because every now and again, God is trying to prove to you that it is not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. And spirit is not carnal, which is why it's embarrassing because it don't make sense. And so she gave, in my conclusion, Saluted her, her baby leaping. Oh, that's cute. Oh my God. The baby got the Holy Ghost. Oh, that's cute. The mama got the Holy Ghost. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. But I got to go back home to my problems. Yeah. Isn't it funny yes. how God could use you to get somebody a breakthrough, but you go home to your problems? Yeah. Use you to explode in somebody's life, but you go back home to your problems, use you to lay hands on the sick, but you go back to coughing yourself to sleep, use you of praying over somebody else's relationship, but you go back home to your fight. Ooh, let me get out of your business. See, see, because it's a weird thing, because how could I be used to bless somebody else, but then go home and lack? You would think that if God is going to use me to bless you, he would give me extra. But every now and again, God will give you something to give to somebody and you go back home empty handed. <sighs> and in my last six minutes. <laughs> when you look at this text, you see. She walked away empty handed. But I see a setup for something to come back. You see that Mary played herself. 
but I see Mary is setting up a boomerang blessing. You see that Mary got her together while she going home with nothing, but I see a strategic posture in which God is going to do something that don't make sense, something crazy, something stupid. So you see she took an L, but I see a setup. Why, 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 why do I see a setup? Because years down the road, <laughs> before Jesus was able to start his ministry, the Bible says that he stepped into the Jordan. Y'all didn't catch it. Y'all didn't catch it. Y'all didn't catch it. Jesus steps into the Jordan face to face with his cousin. The Jordan is water. And there he is in water while his cousin is in water face to face. See, y'all didn't catch it because you see the Jordan. But this isn't the first time that happened because the last time I checked, whenever a woman is pregnant with a baby, the baby isn't just in a belly, but the baby is in water. And you got to understand that this is the second time Jesus faced John when they are facing each other and both of them are in water. Because the first time they was in water, Jesus was in Mary's belly. John was in Elizabeth's belly. Mary saluted Elizabeth and John jumped and all of this happened in water. And she leaves and you think she left and took an L until Jesus steps foot in And you'll stop at water, but if you stop at mortar, you'll miss the rest of the text. There they are, cousins in water for the second time. Behold the Lamb of God, whose shoes I'm not worthy to latch it. I will baptize you with water. He will indeed baptize you with fire. And we'll shout at the water and leave, but you'll miss the blessing. See, see, see. Because after he baptized Jesus and Jesus came up from out of the water, the Bible says straightway the clouds open and God says, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. And the Holy Ghost fell like a duck. Wait a minute. I'm seeing two again because the first time when Mary walked in Elizabeth's house and saluted her, she saluted her. The Bible says she caught the Holy Ghost, but Jesus didn't get it yet. And you thought Jesus took a L and you thought Mary took a L. Somebody's going to catch it. Somebody's going to catch it because John had the Holy Ghost when Mary left their house and you think he took an L and now he's in the water for the second time talking to his cousin and the water and the Holy Ghost his cousin got. In other words, the seed he sown it came oh God now touch three people and say it's coming back <laughs> everything that you sold is coming back every dime you sold is coming back all the love you sold is coming back all the support you sold is coming back all of the backing all of the sacrifice everything you sold is coming back yes sir And we shout about what happened in the Jordan, but all that was, was his harvest of what was sown way back when he was in his mama's belly. And it is on that word that I tell you that 2023 is gonna be different. 
because in 2022, you sold some stuff that you didn't get when the clock hit 12 in 2022. But don't you worry about it because God says, I'm not a God who will rob from you. Be not deceived. God is not mocked for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also. Now walk up to five people and bump them and say it's coming back. <laughs> Your money's coming back. Your platform is coming back. What you sold is coming back. What you sacrifice is coming back. You're not going out empty handed. 23 is gonna be different. 23 won't be like 22. And not because of anything else, but your seed you've sown. It's coming back. I speak is coming back in your spirit. I speak is coming back over your house. I speak is coming back over your body. I speak is coming back over your platform. Oh God, whatever you sow for somebody else, I speak in the name of Jesus. It's coming back to you. Good measure. Second together, shall men give unto your bosom. I'm done, everybody stand to your feet. See, Pastor John came and spoke prophetically. Uh -huh. But the prophetic word you received, when the enemy came and said it wasn't gonna happen, you didn't have nothing to fight it off. So even though you were prophesied over, by the time Tuesday came, it was back to regular. Because you couldn't address the enemy word for word. This is why God sent me here today. Because every now and again, you got to talk back to the enemy. You got to let the enemy know what time it is in your life for real. When the enemy comes to tell you that 23 is going to look like 22, you got to look at him and say, you are a liar. And when he says, why do you call me a liar? You have to take him to the ground that you sowed seeds in. Y'all didn't catch it. Y'all didn't catch it. Do you not understand that I'm talking about people as well? Because when God made man, he made man out of the. And there's people that you sold into. Your love sold into your support sold into having their back sold into keeping their secrets. And you went home empty handed. And now you're in a new year. And the enemy is saying, how do you know it's going to be different? Every now and again, you got to just point at the ground that you sold in. People won't even know why. Sometimes you'll just walk past them and say. <laughs> See, you think I'm losing it, but I'm literally in warfare. You think I'm doing too much, but I'm in warfare. Why? Because I'm pointing out seeds that I've sown that has to come back because Genesis 8 says, as long as the earth remains, it will always be seed time and harvest. Yes, and you've already sown in 22 your love, your support. You've sown in 22 your sleepless nights, you've sown in 22, and now you're in 23. But I came to tell you, on the basis of the power and anointing God put on my life, that this year is different for you. I ain't trying to make you shout. I don't care about your shout. 
I ain't trying to make you run. I don't care about your run. I'm addressing what happens to you three o'clock in the morning when you're depressed. When you want to quit. When you're desperate and lusting to let go. Church folks talk about lusting for sex. Sometimes I lust to quit. I stand and tell you it's going to be different on the word. The Bible said it is the word that destroys the yoke. From this day forward, do not doubt what was spoken over you. The prophecy that was spoken over your life, New Year's Eve, no more doubting. When the enemy speaks up, speak back. Stand on what God promised you. And I declare to you, on the basis of your seed, it will harvest. Now, this might not be everybody, but, but if I was speaking to you at all, come to the altar. If I was speaking to you, if I wasn't, sit right where you at. Don't move. Don't move. Come on, come closer. Come on. Yeah, don't move. If I wasn't talking to you, stay there. When you get to this altar, you got an assignment as I pass this microphone. Your assignment is to bow your head and begin to count out your seeds. Start counting. Yeah, think about in February of last year when that family was getting put out and you scrounged up your money, got your car and packed them in and put them up, seed number one. In May 22, when your friend wanted to quit and call you saying it's over and you spoke life back to them, and said, God has his hand on you and you are better than how you feel right now. Seed number two. When, when, when that girl said she was going to kill herself and you went to her and convinced her that there's still life for you to live. Seed number three. Or what about when you was in church and God put on your heart to sow into a vision, sow into a ministry that's prospering, that's growing, and even though you sowed, you left with nothing. See, number four. I'm going to be quiet for five seconds, not because I have nothing to say, but I want to give you time to count. Count it up. All of it. Count it up. Everything. Count it up. Don't forget nothing. Count it all up. Don't leave one thing untouched. Count it all up. Do you know how many sleepless nights you had? Count it all up. Do you know how many times you had to wipe tears out of your own eyes while you wipe tears out of somebody else's? Count it up. You getting tissue for somebody else while your shirt is catching your tears. Count it. You got somebody else's back while nobody had yours. Count it. Father, in Jesus' name, I lift up every son and daughter in this room. I lift up their pain. I lift up the many days they went without in 2022. Nobody checked on them. Nobody made sure they was okay. Nobody covered them while they did it all for somebody else. And in the name of Jesus, the God that keeps a ledger, in the name of Jesus, the God that has everything written down. I beg of you, give them harvest in every area they sowed. 
I speak harvest over you. It's yours. I speak harvest in you. It's yours. I speak harvest to your house. It's yours. I speak harvest to your relationship. It's yours. I speak harvest to your ministry. It's yours. I speak harvest to your business. It's yours. I speak harvest to your broken heart. It's yours. I speak harvest to what God promised you. It's yours. I speak harvest over your family. It's yours. I speak manifestation be upon you. In the name of Jesus, let it overtake you. Let it flourish. 2023 is different because this is the year I harvest. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Give God praise, family. Come on, thank him. Come on, thank him. Thank him for your harvest. Thank him that it's different for you. 23 ain't gonna be like 22 because you got seeds in the ground, things you planted in the ground. Now, as you go back to your seat, help me prophesy. I want you to touch three people and say it's coming back to you.